okay 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 good day guys good day good day to you all and welcome back welcome back to the formula sports channel boy it's it's really difficult to do videos like these in you know, a man it's it's not easy at all um knock up the like button subscribe if you haven't share the video as well these are ways in which you can help to grow the channel and help to support us boy i don't even know where to start to be honest with you you see on your screen many of you know by now the jamaica reggae boys nil the dominican republic one a rising power within the caribbean but certainly not a country that has the clout or the pedigree that we have in football Damrep last night ladies and gentlemen boys and girls would have given us a, a sound and proper beating they controlled the game that's for sure and they were the better team and they deserved to qualify so congrats to the dominican republic a country that is spending a lot more time and investing a lot more energy and resources in the sport of football and they are rising it and it's a team that we need to continue to be on the lookout for they are rising in women's football they are rising in men's football and making considerable strides um they're making considerable strides rather and this is just the latest example of that you know the sad reality or the narrative that is more than likely going to be coming from the federation is that we, we, we got close and we were this close to qualifying you know but just unfortunate with a, with a bit more luck on our side you know that's that's gonna that's usually the rhetoric that comes from the federation we got to the quarterfinals and we were one win away from qualification that is what they are going to use to excuse the fact that this was a horrible campaign ladies and gentlemen don't let the fact that we got to the quarterfinals fool any of you don't let the fact that if we had won this game we would have qualified for the u20 world cup don't let that fool you ladies and gentlemen really and truly we had no business qualifying for the upcoming u20 world cup we had no business the performances in the tournament thus far have been egregious to say the least we have stumbled and fumbled and got lucky on our way to this particular quarterfinal we had no business beating Haiti if Haiti never get them two red cards the Haiti would have crushed us annihilated us in the last 16 we barely squeeze out of, out of the group any decent team we played to say we were flat would be putting it kindly it has been a, 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 a dreadful 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 campaign from multiple standpoints you know <laughs> To say that when you are watching the team you are struggling to have an idea as to what the team was doing would be putting it lightly when we talk about a highly deficient system in a ladies and gentlemen highly 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 deficient system you don't see any patterns of play no patterns of movement you don't even see a, a flipping style of play what was the style of play of the reggae boys in this particular tournament anybody know show of hands who knows what is the style of play that the reggae boys were trying to implement in this respective tournament if you know the answer to that question please hit me in the comment section what is the style of play highly highly deficient system with no idea as to what 
we were doing on the field of play. When you look at the boys out there, they were clueless. People bemoaning the, the lack of energy and the lack of intensity down to lack of fitness. Man, with the greatest of respect, not Nagoso. In the, in, in, you know, there might have been games where in the latter stages, the team was really looking jaded because we're chasing the game, the entire game. We're going to get tired. That's fact. That's how football works if you keep on chasing the game. The reason for the lack of intensity from the boys, the lack of energy from the boys, is simple. It is something we have seen with every single national team that is coached by a locally born and developed coach. The reason for the lack of intensity is because there is a lack of purpose. What do I mean by that? The man them out there and them don't know where the hell them supposed to be doing. They don't know the roles. They don't know the respective functions. They don't know the patterns of movement. They don't know the patterns of play because there are none. How I could watch the Dominican Republic games leading up to this point and identify the patterns of play. And when I watch my young reggae boys, I don't see no pattern of play or very few patterns of play. The only pattern of play I identified from the boys was in, it was which game? It was the, the Honduras game, if memory serves me right, or the Antigua game. One out of those two games, you could notice that there was a clear plan to play into the feet of Jamari Clark dropping into the pocket trying to hold up the play. And the only one game we see that in a winner see no other pattern of play in this particular tournament. The boys lack intensity, lack energy, and every national team that is coached by a local born and bred coach lacks intensity and energy because there is a highly deficient system that is being employed. No roles, no respective roles for the players, no respective functions for the players, no patterns of play or movement, no nothing. So they are on the pitch, running around, don't know what the hell to do. They don't look like they have any purpose because they just don't know what to do. They are improvising in all the respective moments of the game. A lot of the play is being improvised. It is not being properly planned. Damn sure no implementation because if you don't have a plan, what you're going to implement? If you don't have a plan, what you're going to implement? Our build-up play is being heavily improvised. The players are on the pitch, making it up as they go along. That's why they look so unsure of themselves. That is why the players them out there and don't and look like them don't know what the hell they're doing. I want to 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 say this much, right? I think we need a midfield academy in this country. What do I mean by that? I personally am of the opinion that we need an academy in this country that focuses specifically on the department of midfield. Ladies and gentlemen, our locally bred, locally born midfielders have the talent, but they are lacking grotesquely in the expertise. And that is why when they come up against their international counterparts, they are weighed in the balance and found one thing. Our midfielders do not have the technical know-how. Just a simple concept like mobility seems to elude them. They don't understand the importance of mobility. They don't understand the importance of movement. And the coach don't already now give them the patterns of movement and any of the respect in any of the respective moments of the game. mobility or the lack thereof is always a serious problem with especially our midfield our team especially when we are on the ball in attacking transition our team is too static on the ball 
the player who has the ball at his feet, there's no movement taking place around him. No movement to create passing channels. No movement for players to move into space to receive the ball. No movement to disorganize opposition lines. No movement for nothing. No movement to create space. No movement for nothing. All of this has to be implemented from the coach in the respective system that he's employing one two or young players that don't have the technical expertise to do these things because i don't i really and truly don't think they were taught these things that is why every time whether it's a club team or an international national team plays our international counterparts the midfield looks extremely extremely poor our coaches are heavily relying on the technical and physical ability of our midfielders. No technical know-how. No technical know-how. Linkage is not being made in the middle of the park, so we are failing to progress the football throughout the respective thirds. Because the movement is so poor. Another thing I noticed, why on God's green earth there is almost always so much distance and space between the respective lines in attacking transition by a national team that is being coached by a locally born and bred coach. There's always a lot of space, a lot of distance between the lines. How the hell are you going to have connectivity when the players are miles apart from each other on the park, on the pitch? Look how Manchester City play. When them, when them big side, they are moved the ball throughout the respective thirds there, they move the ball as a unit. You cannot move and progress the ball throughout the respective thirds in isolation. That does make no sense. No sense whatsoever. Some other things that the young reggae boys would have, you know, failed miserably in this tournament. 1v1 defending would have been a major problem in this tournament as well. 1v1 defending the young reggae boys were poor, man. Poor, poor, poor. Another issue that would have shown its ugly head in this particular tournament is unbalanced team selection by Fuzzy. Fuzzy failed to get the balance in personnel right. Fuzzy failed to get the combinations on the pitch, especially in midfield. He failed to get that aspect of it right. By the way, is Christopher Pearson injured? Is this player injured or is he fit? Why the hell are we... If this player... First of all, this player is never... is not a player that is known for his movement in the middle of the park, right? Not from the games that I have watched with him even before this tournament. So if it's a case where this player lacks mobility in his general game, why the, why the hell? Like it was so grotesquely obvious. I now bash Pearson, but the youth no move. His movement and mobility is exceptionally poor. He do have the technical know-how and he's not a quick player either. So his mobility is poor. If it is a case that the player indeed is suffering from an injury, why was he brought to the tournament in the first place? If the player is suffering from an injury, that goes to show you that Fuzzy himself does not understand how important the concept of mobility is in midfield. It's one of the most important principles. To, to, yo, it, it, is just, it is very frustrating, ladies and gentlemen very 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 frustrating our pivot players always for the most part do a poor job because pivot players a lot of the times are responsible for controlling games and they don't understand they don't have the technical know-how to control games mobility is very important to do that they don't have the, our locally born and bred pivot players unfortunately just does not have the technical expertise to control game that's why we're always playing behind the ball and always chasing always chasing the game 
as I said earlier in the in the in the I mean to be fair, all the, the respective departments failed us in this tournament. The defending was poor, the midfield was poor, truth be told, finishing was an issue also in the tournament, right? We failed to play to the strengths of Jamari Clark. I don't understand how we're trying to play one way and have a striker who does not fit the mold of playing that particular way, right? The way of them they are trying to play clearly was not something that aligned with the strengths of a Jamari Clark. So that's another thing that needs to be pointed out as well. All the respective departments fail us. I think the players could have done better in all fairness. The coach damn sure could have done better. Managa stop say we need to export our coaches and we need to put them in situations. We need to place them strategically in jurisdictions where there is far greater expertise and knowledge on the game of football. Coaching badges and CONCACAF C and B license alone now go help them to compete with their international counterparts, right? The CONCACAF license will give you the basic and, and give, no, I shouldn't say basic, but will give you a solid understanding and will give you enough knowledge for you to build from. But the expertise that coaches in overseas jurisdictions, especially in Europe, are learning in the field is far greater than anything that can be taught in the classroom. We need to expose our locally born and develop coaches to that we need to start exporting them overseas and sending them on, I think it's practicums you refer to it as, right? Have some memorandum of understanding between overseas federations okay jamaica will give you track and field coaches you know you take you know you guys can send your coaches here we will send our football coaches down there we need something needs to be done man because our coaches are lacking the expertise we need to set up a midfield academy in this country and we need to get in world-class international youth development coaches to come to Jamaica and teach our midfielders the technical know-how side of it. I don't know how we're going to afford it, but we, do. we need something to develop the technical expertise of our players but guy, and our coaches as well. But guys, that's my two cents. Yet another failed campaign. No excuses. No excuses. Haiti had zero preparation for this tournament. I don't want to hear no foolishness about no preparation or the lack there of a poor preparation. Our preparation might have been poor, but at the very least, we had preparation. Haiti had zero preparation. They hired a coach three days before the tournament, decided to play the tournament like, I think it's a week before the tournament started. Haiti even made up their mind that they were, or changed their mind that they were going to feel a team in this tournament. And when we played them, even when they had nine men on the park, we were still struggling to control the game. But ladies and gentlemen, another failed campaign. All we can say is we wish Jamaica's football all the best. But guys, that's my two cents. Take care, guys. Stay safe. And until next time.